to say hi there and welcome to episode 98 of the ADHD Adults Podcast. I have a migraine. This is the second attempt we've made at size in this podcast. The first attempt wasn't very good. Um, and as usual, I'm James Brown, the man who thought the catastrophe film 2012, managed to get it right this time, was about Albury Town Centre. And I'm joined by the man who hasn't been to Albury or seen the film 2012 or any film since I started making talkies, Dr. Alex Connor. And of course, the woman who puts the ass in catastrophe, Mrs. ADHD. Alex, hi. I thought we were doing a film about apostrophes. This is disappointing. I thought we'd moved on to grammar finally. Doing a film, Ariel. We're doing a film. Film. You, you just did a James. You just did a James, didn't you? I did. It's because you've got a migraine. It's putting me off. It, it is. How dare you? And Sam, hi. Hi, yeah. Short and sweet, as always. How are you both? Mrs. ADHD first. I'm all right today. Thanks. Fucking hell. I know. I mean, that's, that's a shock. It's, it's all or nothing normally. <sighs> Alex, hi. How are you? I am excellent. Thank you very much, James. Yeah, really good. Uh, we are rapidly approaching 100 episodes. Corporate reminder, that was. Which is ridiculous, obviously. And the listener numbers are bafflingly high. One of them has sent us a letter, James. I don't care. That's right. It's from uh, Robert from Kidderminster, in a way. It says, I listened to your episode on perfectionism and thought it was on prefectionism because, as you well know, James was a prefect at private school and all of the Kidderminster working class stuff is a bold lie. That was in 1760, though. Thank you. It makes a lot of sense, actually, Robert. <laughs> I actually, I actually was a pre, I was a prefect. It just really? wasn't oh. I know, I know, I know, I know. For one term, and I just got beaten up, basically. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, carry on. And that, and that was just the teachers. No, no. <clears throat> We've had a real letter. Can I read it out? No. Oh. Uh, hi. It says hiya. Sorry, my name is Marielle. Oh. I hope we've checked. And I want yeah. to say, absolutely love your podcast. Yes, you can say my name, lol. Amazing. Five years ago, my daughter was diagnosed with ASD. Two years later, so was I at the age of 43. That seemed to answer loads of questions. Since then, four years ago, a lot of maths in this, I've realised that ASD <laughs> doesn't answer everything and then found out about ADHD. These disorders that I always thought affected little boys kicking chairs over were now <laughs> inside my daughter and I. Oh, I grieve so much now. It looks like I need to grieve again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is completely inappropriate. <laughs> oh, no. Had okay. to be done. <laughs> Terrible timing. I'm so sorry. Now, now it looks like I need to grieve. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want the me to carry on? <laughs> yes, please. And now it looks like I need to grieve again. I've been referred to East South Wales and obviously now on the long wait. I've read so much, watched endless videos promising me that if I did this, it would help. If I did that, it would help. Just make lists, just set routines. I'm in perimenopause, which initially made me feel I was losing my mind. Now I know better and view my whole life with increasing wonder. How on earth did no one see? I discovered your podcast last November and all I could... Last November, and was all I could listen to. The relationship between you all feels so loving and insulting at the same time. Reminiscent of all the proper relationship friendships I've had. Not many, because I simply cannot cope with false people, and I have a very dry, insulting humour, lol. I think she'd approve of the dings then. When Robert from Kidderminster passed, oh, how I grieved with you, to the point I couldn't listen to your podcast for a month. Then I started back, but only the more recent ones and slowly working my way back. Why on earth was I affected so badly like this? I couldn't tell you. I'm so sorry for your pain. Came to see your talk in Cardiff. Met Alex briefly beforehand and was so happy to do so. You may feel like you're not important, but your podcast shows I can do this as long as I keep my humour. You give so much info in a way that just makes sense. You're not promising anything, not giving ridiculous advice like just do the thing. It's as easy as that, for fuck's sake. I'm now co-founder of a women's ADHD support group in Swansea, Swansea Women's ADHD Network, SWANS. And we are steadily growing. We hope to get other groups set up too in time. Ha <laughs> ha. One step at a time, eh, lol? So, yeah, I'm 47 now. Hope to get diagnosed this side of 50 and start learning all about myself yet again. All your brutal honesty from Sam's inability to let a joke go unspoiled. 
and her views on menopause. Alex's victim complex from apparently being picked on by James, rabbit ears with that. And James, your everyday honesty and refusal to hide your mental health struggles is amazing. All that, not to mention the valuable info you give in each episode. Doesn't matter if you believe it, it's my opinion. Thank you so much. Your work is precious and important. You guys are fucking amazing and I'm so fucking lovely. Lucky to have found you just as my ADHD research was ramping up. Well, that's lovely, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I met, Mar I met Marielle outside the Glee Club in Cardiff, and it was a really lovely conversation. And she essentially said, Oh, no, you can't talk to me. I'm not worth discussing with. It was really what a classic ADHD thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just an innate like awareness of, <laughs> of terror. Yeah, that I thought that, that was that was what it was lovely. Yeah, really it was. Nice. Thank you so much. And I'm glad you like the inappropriate sense of humor. It's a good job in it. <laughs> Internationally, James, great question. <laughs> we, uh, we, <laughs> we are up to, by one country, 152 countries. What are the chances of that? Zero. The chances are zero. This week's country is almost certainly not Belgium, where one of the languages spoken is Flemish. So, Portion bag and welcome to the person in Brussels who dropped the phone down the side of a sofa while listening to an episode of something else by accident and has now listened to all of our shite on repeat, probably. Hey, amazing as always, <laughs> Alex. Thank you. <clears throat> so, as usual, this vibrator you find in your mum's shawl that seems to have one of your dad's pubes on of a podcast is a tragedy in three parts. We choose a theme How do you know? last week. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's a multi, it's a multi layered like gag. To me. It's oh, a multi layered oh. gag. Um, as oh, usual, my dad's or your dad. <laughs> as <laughs> usual, we choose a theme. Last week was about ADHD and perfectionism. Was that last week or was it three days ago? I don't know. God knows. And this week we're focusing on the topic of catastrophizing. Three parts, as usual, include catastrophic evidence based information delivered by pseudo in pseudo English by Alex the Psycho education monkey yeah. our personal reflections on the theme and top tips etc on the topic so alex as usual this is obviously going to be a fucking car crash but at least we all expect it so fire away so yourself okay so when we did the episode on perfectionism we described it as a form of cognitive distortion that doesn't mean having an oversized, perfectly round, but beautiful <laughs> head. It means having maladaptive thoughts, or more usefully, that our brain misinterprets events and processes them for us in a way that hurts us emotionally or, or practically. If you remember how we discussed how we use, uh, humans use mental filters. So when you're walking about, you don't have to think about every little bit of thing coming into your brain. And so we filter them into things we're used to. But if those filters are negative, or not working healthily, that is called a cognitive distortion. And they increase our negative mu mood, they fuel anxiety, they make us self-loathe. Cognitive di distortions were found to be associated with mental health dis issues like depression and av avoidant coping style in life in a study of adults. So is this an episode with on ADHD, ADHD and on cognitive distortions? I mean, you've not, you've not started well, have you, really? Now, another one of those, which is particularly important for ADHD, and in fact, for the three people making this shambles, is an absolute catastrophe. Ah, ha, ha. It's the difficult to say, especially for James, catastrophizing, which means overdwelling on the worst possible outcome or interpretation of what has happened, of events. Examples might be thinking a plane is going to crash or thinking you, you've made a mistake so important that you're going to get fired. And it also includes, for obvious reason, magnifying or negative filtering, such as, you know, if you get 100 feedback comments from work or from people, listeners, for example, and there's one <laughs> negative review on feedback, James X365, you wank. So if you get one negative comment and that's all you think about, that is negative filtering, James, Sam, <laughs> Alex, or three of us, that's what we do. 
it it may seem obvious that dwelling on negative things is is a is a, like a spiral, a negative spiral. But it doesn't feel that you're spiraling at the time. We often feel the opposite that by thinking about it, by concentrating on the negative things, we'll somehow deal with them and they'll go away. It might feel like the advice is there for, oh, well, you shouldn't talk about your feelings. You should just put things to the back of your brain. But in reality, it's more about how you frame negative feelings in your own head. And when discussing them with other people, like in talking therapy. So unlike perfectionism, that's the other or one of the other cognitive distortions. There's not a lot of evidence that catastrophizing does any good at all. So sometimes perfectionism can help you. Catastrophizing is almost never good, probably never good. I'm just being science careful. The opposite of catastrophizing, though, isn't just ignoring your problems. It's being realistic or choosing to see your issues in a more positive light. An example would be, so if you have a little pain, just immediately like I do, going, well, that's cancer, definitely. <laughs> you are like it's, that. <laughs> I am, yeah. What about it? Oh, no, that's you. Sorry. I was about to do the Brummie accent. What you about ADHD? That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, James, I'll get to the blooming ADHD, man. So what about ADHD? Well, that I can't do it anymore. Terrible. Oh, Jack please do, because I love the Birmingham accent. It's the only accent I can do that's within like nine five percent of an actual accent, and not I really love genuinely it. It's really racist. Warm and lovely. All right. Well, firstly, all of the things associated with ADHD, depression, anxiety, etc., also come with an can't do it. Also come with an increased association with maladaptive approaches. This is maladaptive. He's going to come up a lot, I think. And that includes catastrophizing. So all of those things are linked to catastrophizing. You never know sometimes with ADHD research whether the things that we have, like ADHD and depression, cause the thing that we talk about on the podcast or if it's just because we have ADHD. Probably never know that. It is reasonable to describe maladaption, such as catastrophizing, but also sort of rumination, you know, dwelling, and, and self-blame is a big one as well. All of them are a form of emotional dysregulation, our old friend, emotional dysregulation. So it's probably then not a shock that there are a few ADHD-specific ADHD studies on catastrophizing in ADHD, one of them showing that it's higher in young adults and adolescents, even when the patients in that group who had depression were excluded, it was still higher, which suggests it's an ADHD thing, maybe. Another study, these aren't great studies, but they're all that we've got. Another one in, in adults with ADHD went as far as to say that these unhealthy coping strategies, if you like, including self-blame and catastrophizing, are used so often by ADHD people that they should be considered in individual and group psychotherapy psychotherapy immediately right from the start of when you go and see a therapist, because they're a huge part of what we do, apparently. And another really interesting in inverted covers very much rabbit ears to you james from the, that same study which was from france added that blaming others is is a maladaptive strategy in adhd and that's part of catastrophizing so and it suggests a problem with and this is the key phrase i didn't do not like a possible problem in all people with adhd in the perception of self and the perception of others but only in emotionally triggering situations. So, and that is so right, isn't it? When you go into a, a work meeting and you think, oh, well, I know exactly what to say. And then the emotions get high and you completely lose who you are and who they are and go off on one. And that seems yeah. to be from this study, a really interesting observation. That is interesting. What else, what's also interesting is Sam not looking at the script as usual. Mm. Oh, sorry, I was really interested in that. What do you want me to say? Uh, so are these things say? disorders themselves? <laughs> <laughs> oh no no they're not in a word no these mal these maladaptive coping strategies aren't mental health disorders um they're often how we have grown up how we externalize the world and internalize it we often catastrophize because we're in pain physically emotionally or it might be because we've just always done that or our parents did that and that's what we've, we've observed it might just be a habit we've got into no one actually knows why people catastrophize. So what? how can we stop it? What can we do about it? Now that is that is an excellent question. As usual, Sam, your questions are better than terribly fake professor, faux Professor James. 
Wanker. So Homer Simpson on The Simpsons said, channeling very real modern psychiatric advice, I think, that if you've got a problem, you just roll it into a tiny little ball and hide it in the back of your head and forget about it, which isn't right. But isn't completely wrong either. Instead, there's a middle ground of, of stepping away. Obviously, the difficult question is how the fuck do you do that? Flexible thinking problems with ADHD make it difficult to step away. Excuse me, difficult to think about something else. So one way is to challenge the unhelpful thought. So just have a list of questions on a pad or something somewhere in your house with, what is the evidence for this thought written on it? What would I tell a friend who told me that? A good friend. Not one of your friends, James, who, you know, <laughs> entirely imaginary. That's a really helpful one. I use it in coaching all the time. Well, if, if you told me that and we were friends, what would you what would you say? And they always say, well, I'd say that was ridiculous. One question you can ask yourself is, what are the costs of these thoughts? So if it's if there's if you think that and it's true, what are the costs? If the costs aren't that high, then you can start to let it go. Are there any benefits to having that thought? What, and here's a good one. What thought, more positive thought, can I replace that with? These are the kinds of things that talking therapies will work with you on. All of this is a way to deal with anxiety as well. That's what, exactly pretty much the same questions. And anxiety we've often, often developed for whatever reason with ADHD. And these thoughts can change. So my main advice would be to have a go at James's totem. And when you've done that, get one of them wristbands. <laughs> Right, so we've done so we've done top tips then, which will make part three shorter. Um, we'll be back in part two for personal reflection. See you in a bit. Alex, hi. Hi. What's up? Hello, Governor. Welcome back to episode ninety-eight of the ADHD Adults Podcast, where we're talking about ADHD and catastrophizing. This is part two, where we'll talk about personal reflections on catastrophizing and ADHD. James, what are your personal reflections? All impressive. the fucking time. <laughs> um, every, every morning, and I'd and I never really realised this, but every, every morning, friend of the show, Eric, and fellow trustee will message me saying, morning, how are you? And if I look back through those messages, every morning's a disaster. Oh, I haven't slept for three nights now. It's terrible. Or, oh, God, I'm sleeping too much, and I'm struggling to get up for work. Or, oh, my back's dead. So it's everything's a catastrophe all the time. Um, ironically, apart from real catastrophes, which I deal with very calmly and um, objectively. And I find that fascinating. I really like that you've put, told us about the Eric thing, even though we do a how was your week thing every Thursday, where you respond in exactly that way. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, exactly. You need to go and listen to them all. Oh, yeah, I can't. No, I can't. Oh, Nobody God, could you imagine? Yeah, exactly. No. Um, so, you know, no barbecue sauce. Panic! Oh, God, it's terrible. That means I can't have that one particular meal that I like barbecue sauce with. But, you know, relationship issues, bereavement, health issue. You know, most of the time, yeah, okay, deal with that. If it's a serious health issue, not, not like a migraine like this morning. I think almost everything is a catastrophe, but... What I have noticed is, and it's difficult because I've got a migraine today, but it's relevant, is when I've either not slept, and then Alex, you know, sleep's important. When I've not slept, or if I've had a migraine, or if I'm really stressed, then just like most ADHD symptoms, I catastrophize more. So if I'm in a good place, and, you know, there's something at work that's just, there's a really big issue, I'm, you know what, don't care. But then if I'm in a bad place and a tiny little issue, I can just blow up into, well, that's it. I'm going to leave. I'll do something else, et cetera. So, yeah, it happens all the time, but oddly for little stuff, not big stuff. Sam? Um, well, when I first saw this, I thought, oh, I don't do that at all. But then as you were describing it, I realised that I probably do. So I do a lot, um, a lot of my you know, me lying awake at night, thinking about every interaction I've ever had and working out what they meant by it and all that. But what I also do is kind of prepare for future events. And I, I always think I'm protecting myself by thinking of the worst possible outcome and how I will react to that outcome so that I, I feel that I'm prepared. Um, but obviously, the exact things that are prepared for will never happen. And I cannot rely on myself to know how I am going to react or behave 
in a certain situation because I'm so ridiculously unpredictable. So I can't ever prepare. Um, but what one thing you said about um, the afterwards thing, the negative filter, that's something I do a lot. So if I prepare for something and I've obviously prepared for the worst possible outcome, which then it goes really well which I'm never prepared for because I haven't thought about, I don't even allow myself to think about that because I don't, it's too unsafe. So if the best possible outcome happens, I'm not prepared for it. And then I don't really deal with it very well because I don't know how to respond because I'm not prepared for it. And then afterwards, like you say, I will misremember it and think that everything was really bad. And actually I did really badly. And um, But go on. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, you're probably going to go on to this, but I just wanted to say the bit externally that's most obvious is the focusing on the one negative comment is you'll get, yeah. we get so many messages saying, Sam's amazing. We love Sam. She's the best part of the podcast. We've got low IQs or something like that. Um, and then, and then one person will say, "Wow, I listened to the episode on burnout, and it, you know, it, the, the, it was different. There was lots of interrupting." And then you'll be like, "Well, that's it. I need to leave the podcast. I'm shit. I've ruined it." But yeah. you say that, Jane. It's not just negative. I like this. This is a roast of Sam. She also does the negative interpretation <laughs> filter. We had a oh yeah, <laughs> that is a proper thing. <laughs> the the <laughs> she, we had an email going. I really love. Or an Instagram comment. I really love Mrs. ADHD and the ADHD adults, which makes us sound like a fucking backing man. And Sam interpreted that as she's not one of the ADHD adults. Yeah. It's un <laughs> an unbelievably yeah, negative it's interpretation. The ADHD adults and me. That's what they okay. meant. Did you I think don't... like Jerry and the pacemakers didn't include Jerry? That's I my don't know most that up to date is. reference. It may be because of the the almost deliberate kind of in joke that it says with in the rabbit ears Mrs. ADHD on the cover because yeah. that and not include well yeah that and not including her face it was just all to kind of diminish her with Sam's agreement she 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 was in on this as we sat on a train back from Bristol but yeah anyway Sam carry on um yeah I think though <laughs> despite everything that I've said I feel and I don't know whether this is true or not that I'm quite a positive person. And at work, I'm really good at convincing everybody, <laughs> fuck off, James, <laughs> convincing everybody that everything's completely fine and every, every, everything's going to be fine. And actually, if anybody's worried about ev anything, like my boss, quite often, if he's got somebody that's worried about something in his room, will shout through and say, Sam, and I'll go, everything's going to be completely fine. There's nothing to worry about. And I can convince myself and other people that everything's going to be fine. Why were you putting your hand up, James? Oh, because that was bollocks. Really? Yeah, I'm, you're a positive person. Y yes, you do say everything's going to be completely fine, but you say it as you're crying and as you're talking about how everything's <laughs> not going to be fine. So I'm not a positive person. You are. You are. You are. Out time I am. I, outside of Outside of ADHD Towers, you are, and you are positive, even though that's a mask. Inside our house, everything's a catastrophe. When it's uh, when you unmask, it's all a catastrophe. There's like, like, you know, oh, God, no, I've spent two hours hyper-focusing on doing charity stuff when I was meant to be doing something else. And, like, it doesn't matter. You, 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 you've, you've done oh. stuff. You've achieved something. Everything is a catastrophe. Oh, God, there's, I there's do this all difference. the time, then. <laughs> There's a difference, isn't there, between uh, between negative filter and being an upbeat, positive personality, which you definitely are. Of course, you are, but but it, that's not the same as 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 a cognitive filter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right. I see. I don't think I'm a positive person. What about you, Alex? <laughs> yeah, you know, guilty, my lud, kind of. This is I, what I have also noticed is that James and I, to a certain extent. Um, when we chat to you as well, Sam, is, is it's easy to do that with other ADHDers as well. It's easy to persuade yourself that, you, like, to all to, to spiral together in conversation. And I sometimes have to draw that to kind of purposefully put me little coaching head on and go, is that is that true, Alex? What are you thinking, or are you just kind of having a moaning actually? And is that is that a healthy conversation? Because there's always it's it's all it's seductive. It's seductive to focus on the negatives, but it's incredibly unproductive. Mm. And so if I go, okay, what could the 
Oh, no, I'm going to have to compliment him. And everyone knows how much I hate that. One of the things James is really good at is thinking of a rosy future and planning for it, even though when it does happen, he he complains that there was a fly in the soup or something. But, you know, even though the thing works out, some of my best successes in life are because James has told me they will work. So we've done them, they have. And then he went, oh, no, the lighting was wrong or some shit. But you know, he, he thinks positively in the future, and I try and try and do that too because that's what it works. And it, it's so important to reframe y- your filter a little bit. That sounds like a ding, but I don't think it was. Oh, I've just reframe my filter. I'm going there for half an hour. <laughs> so yeah, all the time uh, with other ADHDs, and and I think it, it would be hard to say to a friend when you're being negative about the world. Are we being? Are we catastrophizing it? Should we talk about something positive? Mm-hmm. Because it, it it helps. It really, really helps. I say it because partly because it annoys James. Or I'll say, you know, what what's your positive journey at the moment, though, James? <laughs> Fuck off. What is what's good with you right now? <laughs> My Maybe. pole instructor's really good for this. He'll yeah. if I say, oh, I'm really really shit. I couldn't do that, and he's going. So that's the story you're telling yourself today. Are you going to stick with that story or should we change it, Sam? Lovely. Yeah, really it. It. To be fair to Jack, he also laughs his ass off when you make a mistake and know, points yeah, out and says, that was, well, that was shit. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you just put your foot on the pole? Yes. Why did you do that? Yeah. I love that. He just tells me. <laughs> he tells me off all the time and I love it. Right. Have we got time for a game? No, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we have. Right, it's not this week. I'm I'm bearing a skeleton from my um, closet, Al, 25 years Pink. ago. This is. I did think about that, and then I thought, no. So, yeah, anyway. This, so, 25, 25 years ago, a person that I worked with, who I wouldn't really call a friend, was going away. He lived with his parents, with their parents. They were very wealthy. And they said, would you like to stay at our house to feed our pets um, for two weeks while we're away? And I was like, yeah, okay, we'll do. Oh, I, then immediate, I then immediately and impulsively took a job in working at a pub in Wolverhampton <clears throat> just for two weeks because I was helping a mate whose mum had just bought the pub. So obviously I, I didn't really stay there much. I didn't really look after the pets. I can't even remember what pets they were. I can remember there was definitely a cat. So you've got three options as to what happened because I didn't kind of remember to go there and impulsively went somewhere else. A, did the cat die? Look at Sam's face. Two, did the cat get lost so it wasn't there when they got back? Or three, did a neighbour have to take the cat in because they realised it wasn't being looked after? Oh, that's good. Uh, did it die? If you, mm, did, When you say die, do you mean like Can't reborn? As a vampire, no, no, no not vampirize. Found it dead. Okay. Hung, hung no, I don't think window. so. Because if, if it was a live cat and you and you'd seen it once, you'd have you'd have drained it dry. Yeah, so yeah, not yeah. die. Uh, I don't think the cat got lost because I've been to Wolverhampton. It wouldn't have left the house. So I think a neighbour took it in. And the house wasn't in. The house wasn't in Wolverhampton. The house was in Butley, actually. Oh, in that case, I changed my answer. Just, I'll give my answer. Neighbour took it in. Oh, I hope it's that fuck. one. It is that one, yeah. Thank fuck. Is that 9-7? I think that's 9-7, isn't it? 9-7. Seven, and just being aware, statistically, I get a one in three chance of this. So effectively, it's 18-7 or something. Do I look like Stephen Hawking? No. Yeah, the, the neighbour took the cat in and obviously immediately when they got back, went round and said, that person hasn't been staying there. And you know what I said? Yes, I have. My word against hers. Uh, what? <laughs> Amazing. But I'm not going to fucking admit to it, am I? What? I said that. I said that cat was there until two days ago, and I just didn't come last night. Look how much food's gone. I chucked some food in the bin, and you know. Oh my god. I know. Oh my word. On that bombshell, we'll take a break, and we'll be packing back in part three to repeat. Largely what Alex said in the psychoeducation in terms of tips. It was psychoeducation. That was evidence-based from a paper. Oh, of, oh, oh, this, that... I really had to stop myself throwing this pebble at the Calm. laptop then. Calm. Because I don't okay. know. I just really wanted to, but I stopped myself. Yay. Well done. Yeah. Are we still, is this the break now or are we, I guess we're still going. See, see you in part three. 
Bye. Yeah. Welcome back to episode 98, for the love of God, of the ADHD adults. We're talking about catastrophizing or looking at everything through a negative filter with ADHD. As always in part three, we are doing tip topics. Uh, I haven't already done my own top tips. I just read out some of the evidence-based examples of what psychotherapy <laughs> does for this issue. James, thank you very much. So, James, have you got any top tips that are, and I can't stress this enough, utter horseshit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, step back, challenge your thoughts, um, maybe use a wristband, which is basically what you said in, in first part. No, but what I'd say is that everything is transient, Not, you know, uh, everything is is temporary although i wrote nothing is temporary in script and that means that your 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 current catastrophe will soon be a past event you forget about and you probably dealt with it very well and tr try and remember that when you're in the moment try and remember that you've catastrophized probably quite a lot about things and actually so the after effect the after effect um can can be damaging to your mental health your self esteem for example um what I would also say is, what I would also say is, and this is something that Sam and I do a lot, is if something is, you, you think something's a kind of a future catastrophe, like, oh God, we've got to do that tomorrow, then we just say, well, that's future Sam and James's problem. And, and actually, when we're dealing with it, we then say, fucking past Sam and James, what a couple of cunts. I can't believe they've left us with this. But it means in, prepare, in preparing Good. for a catastrophe, we just let it go because that's future Sam and James's problem. And yeah. those are my horse shit top tips. <laughs> hmm. What about you, Sam? That's really good, actually. I forgot that we do that. <laughs> but it is really good because it's like, oh, yeah, we haven't got to worry about that. I hate, I'm horrible to, horrible to future Alex. Horrible to it. I know, yeah. But sometimes when you are future Sam and James and you've done something good for yourself, it's really good. It just doesn't oh, happen yeah. often. But sometimes no. I do just to make up for all the shit that I do. Um, I would say one thing that helps me, I think, is sharing. So say, so I don't, I get, I don't get. Oh, I'm saying that I don't get stressed about much, but then I heard what James said and it sounds like I do. <laughs> I'm really not self-aware at all. The at least self-aware comment ever I know. made by a I human really felt being. like I saw this and thought, well, that's not something I do. Um at work, sometimes I can get really um scared about things that are gonna happen. So something that helps for me is if I share that. So I'm really lucky I've got somebody that I work really closely with who I love guilty. and if she's nervous <laughs> about what so I guilty. assumed it was me <laughs> good one if she's really nervous about something she tells me because I am so brave about things that are for other people even if it's something yeah. really scary I'm like I'll take over and go, no, no, don't worry. You don't need to present in front of everybody. I'll do that for you. And I can be really brave and just step up and don't worry about it if it's for somebody else. And then if I've got something that I'm worried about, if I confide in her, she does the same for me. And she'll say the same, like, I'm not stressed or worried about it because it's not my event. So I don't really care about it. And yeah. it just really, really helps. Because if you can kind of share, and also it's somebody to laugh about it with and somebody to oh, say huge. you're being ridiculous this is nothing yeah. and just to share it with you so that but also something you would think <laughs> saying something about um when you kind of you you can both kind of ramp each other up and I've got some friends that this happens with one friend in particular and we'll talk about this how bad we are for one another because we kind of we both get really anxious and nervous about things in the future and we'll talk about it and we're just getting worried until we're worked up into a frenzy. So this person, when she messages me with negative things a lot, I just don't engage. And, and even if I'm having a really bad time, I'll be like, no, everything's fine. Everything's great. And it kind of, 
it, it discharges it a little bit so that we don't ramp each other up so that then she almost looks for something positive and is like, yeah, it's not so bad here. And it, it kind of works. We kind of I think you you can underestimate sometimes the effect that you have on other people and how kind of buying into that catastrophizing with them just makes it so much worse for both of you. So if you can kind of without saying you're catastrophizing, you need to fucking calm down. You can just be like, oh, I'm so sorry that things are really bad for you. But, you know, it's it's not so bad for me. And it kind of makes them almost apologize for making out that things are so bad. And so they'll be like, actually, it's not that bad. You know, it's not all bad. And it kind of diffuses. But that might just be me and my friend and nobody else. So Sam's little book of top tips, little short, snappy things people can use to <laughs> <laughs> what about you alex <laughs> well, um yeah diminish your friends experiences i agree that's what you should do <laughs> 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 everything i would say everything that james how do just i have stole. any friends at all <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but you're, 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 because you never get stressed so i've got two two top tips here one of them is Similar to perfectionism, if you're catastrophizing and you think, oh, it's really bad and you're getting anxious about doing something because of a negative filter, make sure there's an action that you can win at instead. So if, if you're saying I can never keep tidy, it's the same thing. Well, you never will because there's no you can't win at that. You could always be tidier. But if you if you're saying, well, I could empty the dishwasher, you can. So make make. D d don't make you you're going to fail if it's not a clear action that you can win at so if you're saying i'll never be good or i'll never be fluent or i'll never be this i'll never be that well well that's true because you could always be better you are going to fail at that but if if you say okay what what is possible what can i do i like james that we've got a lot of uh watchers on youtube and they're consistently watching you clean your ears which is it's spectacular uh, I, <clears throat> technically they're they're watching me take my headphones off because listening to both you talk is like staples in my scrotum when I've got a migraine, <laughs> and I had to stop halfway oh, through the ADHD. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's just it's it's burning into the soul I don't have anymore. Have you finished, by the way? <laughs> I I guess I have. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that was episode ninety-eight of the ADHD Outs podcast, where we talked about ADHD and catastrophizing. Quick product recommendation, just because I've been using it is ChatGPT, if you've not used it, the online free uh, artificial intelligence source. And the reason I think it's useful is, if you're struggling to engage with a task that involves writing, it's often the starting that's hard. So if it's sending an email, writing a letter, writing a report, you can just type in, write me the introduction for a report on X, or write me an email to my boss about why, and it will give you something that you can then edit and work on. Because often it's that blank page or that blank file that's difficult to start with. So have, just have a look at it, have a play with it. Is it like a website? What do you do? How do you? Yeah, just just go Google. Let me Google this for you, Al. Just Google <laughs> Chat yeah. GPT, and then log okay. in and ask it any questions you want, and you can get it to write. A academia is shitting themselves, by the way, because it can write. Um, stuff that will get 80 or 90 percent oh. perfectly referenced that passes turnitin as not being um as not being plagiarized is it as good wow. as that top tip there university students yes it is um it is it is as good as <laughs> it is as good as us Jeeves. just before we go because obviously i'm gonna i'm gonna vomit soon um not obviously i normally want to vomit with these two but i've got a migraine um episode 100 episode 100 mm. is coming up it will be i guess <laughs> next week and yep. we're going to answer your questions on all types of subjects, largely spherical heads. So make sure you tune in for that. Um, if by a miracle you enjoyed this episode, as usual, why not support the charity on the link provided? As otherwise, Alex is going to have to get a job swinging upside down inside a grandfather clock to make ends meet. As I'm glad usual, you said clock. <laughs> as usual, contact us on the socials or discard. And um, discard, I've fucking discard. done it again. <laughs> 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 Amazing. Uh, Fuck my life. See you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye all. <laughs>